evening, I would like for us to take our Bibles and turn to the passage uh, this evening. It is found in uh, Luke uh, 17, verses 11 through 19. The title of the message is, Give Glory to God, Giving Glory Unto God. In verse 11, uh, reading through verse 19, the Scripture says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was cleansed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. One of the most dreaded diseases that we see in biblical times was the disease of leprosy. It was a slow killer. And those who were, were detected as having leprosy in Israel, uh, they were not to accompany with the people of God uh, because uh, they would infect others with their disease. When one suspicioned that they might have leprosy, they were to uh, go to the priest under the law, Leviticus chapter 13, verses 3 and 8 and 14. And uh, the priest uh, would look to see if uh, the skin was evidencing leprosy, and if it was diagnosed as lepr leprosy, the person was, was pronounced unclean, and they uh, were not to, as we said, mingle with other people. And so we see that uh, although this uh, was a death uh, a terminal disease, yet it caused those who had it uh, to suffer greatly. Can you imagine being put away from your loved ones, uh, having to spend the rest of your time with those who had the same misery that you had, leprosy? It is said by some that the Jews believed uh, anyone who had leprosy received it for some particular sin that they committed. And, you know, uh, we have to be careful about making that judgment. Uh, a lot of times people will uh, make judgments about people because of certain things that happened to them and, and uh, say, well, it's because of something that they did. Uh, we can't make that judgment unless God makes it very clear that that is so. Now, it... Uh, not necessarily that uh, these things come upon us is a, a sign of God's displeasure. Uh, sometimes it is, but uh, we uh, have to leave that judgment in the hands of God. But we certainly can see how that a poor leper would suffer uh, extreme, uh, not only physical anguish, uh, but uh, mental anguish as well. And we find out uh, during the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we read through the Gospels, it seems uh, that uh, there were uh, numerous uh, leper, lepers uh, in the land. And so our Lord in His earthly ministry uh, showed His 
healing power uh, by healing lepers and cleansing them. One of the most dreaded uh, diseases uh, of that time. And yet we also find, also not only do we see our Lord Jesus Christ healing all manner of sicknesses and diseases, but the thing that we need to, to note is that God and our, our Lord Jesus Christ in, uh, incarnate, uh, He is merciful. Uh, God is merciful to the greatest of our miseries. And there may be times in our life when we feel like we are at our wit's end and we don't know where to turn. Remember this, that God is merciful. And uh, he, he is infinitely uh, merciful. And He not only uh, knows uh, that need that we have, but He is well able uh, to deliver us. In the text before us, uh, Jesus was returning from Galilee. Uh, a lot of our Lord's ministry was in Galilee. Galilee was the northern part of Israel. And uh, then as you travel uh, south from Galilee, you come into uh, the place called Samaria. Now, uh, the Samaritans uh, were despised by the Jews uh, because they were a mixed race. Uh, but also because their worship was different. Uh, we uh, have in John chapter 4, remember our Lord Jesus Christ? They did not uh, uh, worship as they should. And uh, this lady that met with our Lord Jesus Christ at uh, Jacob's well uh, wanted to get into a discussion uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ about whether uh, they ought to worship in Samaria or whether true worship was in Jerusalem. And uh, the Lord's answer was, the time's coming when uh, there will be no worship in Samaria nor in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, that is, that that Old Testament system that was set up, uh, now the uh, system that was set up in Samaria in the Old Testament uh, was uh, idolatry. It was idolatrous. That was set up by uh, Jeroboam when he uh, set up the two calves, you'll remember. And uh, when uh, the uh, nation of Israel uh, was split, and uh, Jeroboam became king of the north, and uh, he set up idolatry. And during all the time of those kings, until they, in the north, in Samaria, until they went into the Babylonian captivity, not one of those kings was a righteous king or worshipped the true God. And uh, we find even in Judah, uh, during the time of the kings, uh, for the most part, the kings themselves got corrupted because of the corruption in Samaria. But uh, we find our Lord Jesus Christ doing much of His ministry in Galilee. Now, Galilee was in the north. It bordered on a Gentile nation, uh, Syria. And so you can see how that uh, in uh, Galilee uh, there uh, was a lot of... Uh, it was much, much more corrupt. And um, when our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born up in Galilee, in, in the city of Nazareth, uh, it says that uh, a great light uh, when he was incarnate and his parents uh, settled in Nazareth, a great light has come unto that area, into the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. That was the tribes in that area. And uh, that light, of course, was the incarnate Lord Jesus Christ. Now here our Lord is, has manifested Himself as the Christ. And He is, uh, has manifested that through the miracles which He did and through that which He taught uh, based upon the Scriptures. But I want us to note as our Lord Jesus Christ uh, is uh, walking toward Jerusalem, uh, leaving Samaria, He goes through, I mean leaving Galilee, He goes says in verse 1, uh, as he went to Jerusalem, then he passed through the midst of Samaria and, and Galilee. We read in Luke uh, of a similar account, Luke 9, verses 51 through 52, and it came to pass when the time was come that he, our Lord Jesus Christ, should be received up. So this was shortly before our Lord went to the cross. 
uh, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Now, along the way to Jerusalem, by the providence of God, the Lord Jesus Christ meets ten lepers who were very desperate. They were crying out for mercy. It says he entered into a certain village in verse 12, and there met him ten lepers, ten men that were lepers, which stood far off. So the leper, uh, when he would come in contact with others who were not lepers, uh, they had to stand a distance away uh, from those who did not have leprosy. And uh, these ten lepers knew that the Lord Jesus Christ was passing by their way. And uh, they sought the Lord Jesus Christ's mercy uh, to, uh, heal, to heal them. And we see, it says in Leviticus 13, 46, that when one had this leprosy, it says, all the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled, he is unclean, uh, he could not only mingle with the people of God, he could not go to the place of worship with the people of God. He shall dwell alone, without the camp shall his habitation be. Now, although uh, lepers could not uh, commingle uh, with others who were healthy, uh, in Matthew 8, chapter 20, chapter, and Matthew 8, verses 2 through 4, our Lord uh, not only uh, mingled with a leper in the New Testament, but he actually touched the leper and, and healed him. And so we have here in verse 13, ten lepers lifting up their voices and crying out these words in verse 13. Jesus, that means Savior, Master, have mercy on us. They sensed their need. They sensed the urgency of and the immediacy of the Lord Jesus Christ healing of their leprosy. No doubt they had heard that the Lord Jesus Christ had healed various other diseases and perhaps had heard about some of the cases of leprosy that our Lord Jesus Christ healed, and they had hoped that they too could receive of that mercy. There are some that like to parallel uh, leprosy uh, to uh, sin and the way it's so destructive uh, to man. And uh, we see that our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, through uh, His death on the cross, uh, is able to pardon all of our sins. Uh, he imputes to us uh, His perfect righteousness and obedience. And so we can be so thankful this evening as our trust rests in the Lord Jesus Christ that all of our sins, no matter uh, how great they may be or how long we have remained in sin, if we truly repent and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we can be saved and be delivered from our sins. In verses 14 through 16, we see that uh, Jesus then sends the lepers he, to the priest. And on the way, as they go to see the priest, the way it was in the Old Testament, they would see something. And they would say, it looks like leprosy. So they had to go to the priest, and the priest would diagnose it, whether it was or whether it wasn't, as I was reading in that passage in Leviticus. But here, as they were crying out to the Lord that the Lord would heal them, the Lord sends them to the priest, and he says that while they yet have their leprosy, and while they're going to see the priest... 
they're healed. They obeyed the Word of God. We need to be daily in the Word of God. Not just reading so we can say we read so many chapters. Or that we can say that we kept up our daily reading so that we finished reading the book uh, in one year. Uh, no, we're, we're to read the Word of God because it's, it's, it's God's manual to teach us His will and how we are to live. The question is asked in the Psalms, how shall we then live? The answer to that question is found right here in the Word of God. And so the poor lepers uh, then uh, go to uh, the priest, and as they go, uh, they are healed, as we note in verses 14 through 16. And when he saw them, that is, our Lord saw uh, the lepers, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, glorified God. And he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. I just want to have us think about that last couple of, those last couple of words that I, that I said. He was a Samaritan. I would suggest to us that the other nine were no doubt Jews, but here is one, though they were all lepers, they could mingle, and one of them was a leper, and out of the ten, one was, it says, a, uh, a Samaritan, he's also uh, called in verse 18, a stranger, the last word of verse 18 calls this Samaritan a stranger, uh, that is uh, the word is really a foreigner. The Samaritans were considered foreigners uh, to the Jews, and they were not to mingle with each other. But since they all had leprosy, they basically uh, uh, saw no need uh, in uh, separating or being separate from each other uh, since they had this commonality and they were put out uh, from the people outside the camp. Uh, here we have the Samaritan mingling then uh, with the Jews who had the same, uh, the same disease. And uh, the Lord heals ten, and only one comes back to give thanks to the Lord. What we want to note here is how that this Samaritan got it right. Gratitude and thanksgiving uh, should have caused all of them to turn back when they were cleansed immediately. They didn't need to really go to the priest now because they, uh, they could go later after they gave their gratitude to the Lord Jesus Christ, but they were cleansed. Matthew Henry says, we may expect good to meet us with mercy when we are found in the way of duty. Jesus said, go to the priest. All of them headed toward the priest. And all ten of them were healed. So what is so remarkable about this miracle, as we say, is that only one returns to give glory unto God. We see in verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, cried out, and gave glory unto the Lord. And so from this verse, it appears that the leper uh, immediately came back to the Lord Jesus Christ to give thanks to him, and then perhaps later on, as was required by the law, went to show the priest 
that he was clean and thus he could be received back in uh, to uh, amongst the people of God. But what, what we note here is the ingratitude of man's heart. Nine out of ten are not showing their gratitude to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to let that be a lesson to us. We need to be thankful for all the good things which God does for us. We see not only gratitude but uh, in this Samaritan, but we see humility. It says he bowed his face to the ground at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. William Perkett well observed that Jesus in healing this Samaritan shows that neither place nor parentage can block up the way or stop the current of God's free mercy. Not the parentage, not our, our heritage, our pedigree, or anything else can block us. And God is pleased to show His free mercy, which reaches to the unworthy and to the ill-deserving. The lepers had nothing that they could do of themselves. Just like our Lord Jesus said in that passage in John 15 concerning Christ being the vine, and He said, you're the branches. Apart from Me, you can do nothing. And so the ten lepers could do nothing about remedying their leprosy. But the Lord Jesus Christ, who healed ten lepers, showed His divine power. Of the ten lepers, just the Samaritan returns, as we note in verses 17 and 19. Jesus here shows His indignation for the nine not returning as the one did from Samaria. In verse 17, Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger or this foreigner of Samaria. So we see here the Lord's displeasure for our not showing our gratitude. I, I'm so glad that we live in a nation uh, that has a day uh, where we uh, set aside a day of thanksgiving to God. I'm so thankful that we live in a day where uh, we acknowledge the first day of the week as the Sabbath day, although many churches don't observe the Sabbath as they should, yet uh, we find in the Scriptures that we are commanded to uh, keep uh, the Sabbath as it is given to us in, uh, in the Scriptures. And so we need to show our gratitude and our thankfulness. When we come uh, for worship, uh, there are many parts of the worship, as you will note, uh, when you look at uh, the order of service. And in all of this, we should be expressing gratitude uh, to God for His blessings. The times that we have for prayer, uh, we ought to be giving thanks to the Lord for all the blessings uh, which He has bestowed upon us in the past week. How that He has blessed our going out and our coming in. You know, one of, uh, there are some mornings that people lift their head off the pillow and they never... Uh, retire to their same bed and lay on that same pillow that night because uh, some tragedy had happened to them. And this happens every day. So we don't know what a day is going to bring forth. And uh, every day we should give thanks to God that uh, He has kept us and preserved us. And uh, we need to also pray that throughout the day that He would watch over and keep us and also our loved ones as well. But in showing thanks to God, uh, Psalm 107, verses 1 through 2, 
uh, shows a, a great deal of how we are to express our thanksgiving. Sometimes uh, it may be difficult for us to put our gratitude and our thankfulness into words. It would be good to take the book of the Psalms, especially Psalm 107, and uh, we see how that the psalmist expresses his gratitude. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. So when we are giving our gratitude unto God, we should reflect upon his attributes, uh, his goodness, his mercy, his love, his justice, his mutability, all of these attributes of God. We, we should be familiar. I like the way in the Westminster Standards it's all spelled out in your confessions uh, about uh, the attributes of God. And uh, we need to study them there and also particularly in the scriptures as we see here in this psalm. Uh, the psalmist is giving gratitude to God because he is good. You know, there is so much evil all around us and all across, all over the world. And we see it breaking forth. It seems like a, a lot of that comes over the media is not good. Uh, I was thinking about uh, maybe somebody ought to have a program about all the good things that happened that day. <laughs> We, we don't see that. Uh, it seems that they always put the dark side there. But uh, as Christians, uh, we can actually see good uh, where there is evil. Uh, uh, that uh, in our lives, where God has, like in Job's case, uh, he went through the worst, perhaps, trial of any single human being, and yet... After he lost everything, his wife suggested that he just curse God and die. But what did he say? Uh, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What, did that, what was he saying? He's blessing God for all that uh, he has given and, and has chosen to take from him. He still praises God. We ought not let our circumstances govern whether we show gratitude to God or not. We should give thanks to God in all things. And so the Lord is good. His mercy. Uh, this is what we see here. It was pure mercy from the Lord Jesus Christ that ten lepers, in the midst of their misery, uh, were completely restored. And so we ought to give thanks to God for His mercy because it endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The psalmist here is saying, God is good, He is mercy. Now those of us that are redeemed, we should be saying so. And uh, magnifying God's name for His goodness and for His mercy, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, what we should note here, he took note, did he not, of the ten lepers? He must go through Samaria here so that he can meet these ten lepers. He knew that he was going to meet up with them because he is God. We should take note that Jesus knows our sufferings. But also... We should take note of this, that Jesus also takes note of whether we express gratitude uh, for the blessings which he has bestowed upon us. It was well said by someone other than myself that God forgets our sins, but he records our mercies. He forgets our sins, but He records our mercies. And so therefore, uh, we, must, we must always glorify God. You know, the Scripture says that uh, whether we eat or drink, this is something that we do on a common, commonly three times a day. And whether we eat or drink, 
We are to do all to the glory of God. And so, may we learn here not to be as the nine. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, where are the nine? They are to come and to show their gratitude for the healing that he had been pleased to perform upon them. Can you imagine having leprosy? And then thinking of the misery that these people have gone through for how many years we do not know. And then suddenly, to be immediately healed and not be thankful for that and not go back to the Lord and thank Him, uh, it goes to show how that man's heart uh, is truly uh, hardened when it comes to gratitude. We need to be careful that we do not pass up giving thanks to the Lord. There are innumerable things for which we could thank God. We can thank God for the way He has led us throughout our lives. We could thank God for the way He has provided for us. Uh, We can thank God for for His protection. I'm sure all of us can give accounts of where we we know that God uh, uh, divinely intervened in in a particular situation where we could have, things could have, uh, if God had allowed so, that we could have been in a very serious accident. But we know that uh, God has everything planned out from before the foundation of the world. And uh, that He looks after His people and uh, He protects us. As we think of the horribleness of leprosy, I would like to also, just as I mentioned earlier, as some do link uh, a likeness to leprosy, to sin. Adam Clark, a well-known commentary, he says, sin is the worst of all leprosies. It not only separates those to whom it cleaves from the righteous, but it separates them from God. And nothing but the pitying heart and powerful hand of Christ Jesus can set any soul free from it, from sin or from, from leprosy. Let it be clear to us this evening then how we are to Glorify God. Thomas Watson in his body of divinity answers this question of how we are to glorify God very well. He says we glorify God when we are God admirers. Admire His attributes, which are the glistering beams by which the divine nature shines forth. His promises, which are the charter of free grace and the spiritual cabinet where the pearl of price is hid, the noble effects of his power and wisdom in making the world which is called the work of his fingers. To glorify God is to have God admiring thoughts, to esteem him most excellent and search for diamonds in this rock only. The Lord has sent us into the world as a merchant sends his factor beyond the seas for trade for him. We live to God when we trade for his interest and propagate his gospel. God has given every man a talent. And when a man does not hide it in a napkin, but improves it for God, he lives to God. He glorifies God. Seeing then the healing of this leprosy and also those of us that have been healed of sin through the shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us give thanks to God for His benefits as 
We read in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment, For all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is having pity upon those uh, who are suffering. It is to have pity upon those uh, uh, who have great needs. All of us here this evening have needs that, and burdens that we bear. Remember, God is merciful. And He said, cast all your care upon me. And Peter says, cast all your care upon the Lord because He cares for you. Those that we would think closest in our family relationships that would care, they can never care like God. And God is able to do marvelous things if we take those cares to Him in prayer. And so, let us learn as we leave here this evening uh, to praise God and to glorify Him for all of our temporal blessings and for all of the eternal blessings that He has given us in our salvation and through our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Geneva Bible notes, and I'll close with this, it says, Christ does good even to those who will be unthankful. But the benefits of God to salvation only profit those who are thankful. Amen. Let us uh, bow for a word of prayer.